We were talking about Canada and winter and spring and then it's winter again. Yep. Yes. Basically, it's winter and summer and then winter again is how things sort of work sometimes. Aren't you yep. in Vancouver, Mr. Wharf? Yeah, it doesn't. That's not like that here. Vancouver is much more. We get much more um, summer and then rain and then summer and then rain. But in my experience, where Stephen is, is the only place that I've ever been in the world that can give you winter and then the next day, summer, and then like in a couple of days, you could be back to winter or it could just stay summer. You never really know. It's very interesting. I, I think you're absolutely right because this, this is my impression here so far. It's like it's, it's, it's also very strange because there's snow for months and months and months and all of a sudden it's all gone. Like where, like where, over, like where did all this, like wasn't this, wasn't this white yesterday? No, no, it's not anymore. No, no, it's, it's, no, it's no. all brown and slushy now. And then, and then, you know, so it's, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm not complaining. I think, it, I think it's fascinating because it's not something I've grown up with, but, but it's, it, I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's a very, it's almost a binary system. Like it's no, oh, winter, summer, no, winter. Yeah. Summer, just a no, switch. Yeah. There's, there's just a guy that has a switch. It turns it yes. on and off. And I think sometimes it's take your kid to work day and his kid goes in there yes. and just messes with the switches. And I yeah. think that's, <laughs> I, I think that's probably how it works. Yeah. Do you have yeah. snow on the ground right now, Stephen? No, it's, uh, it's all gone. Uh, it's and it's it's really strange because you see snow for so long that now all the fields are just brown. So now everything is brown. It's like being in a in sort of like a sepia movie, with very interesting. And then it will become beautiful and green, and there will be canola fields, and it's absolutely stunning. But it, it's uh, this is a strange in between. I don't know if you can do anything about uh, your camera setup, Stephen. Uh, but you're low down in the frame, and so where it says, oh. where it has a banner at the bottom, it kind of, yeah, if you just sit up, you know, fix your posture. I can, I can probably take Nalti's The Brain and use this to prop up my device. That, that probably has made easy. such a difference, such a difference. Yeah. It's good How to have a spare brain. How about I prop it up more, and then you have this as a view. Well, that might, this that's work? an improvement. This is a yeah, I know. That's an improvement. I know. Well. How about I do the whole thing? The whole thing sort of as for me as go. <laughs> you need a turban or whatever that is. Do you have a yes, scarf handy? Uh, but would that would that be interesting? I have a picture of Michael Ward in in, in that. Oh, True. Remember outside. I think of, I was there when it was created. Outside of Ackerman, they have a place where you can put your face. I think I have several because it took us quite a while to get something that didn't even look good anyway. So I was unaware of the original picture at the time. I, I understand that's uncultured and terrible. I didn't know the original photo when I was posing behind it, so I didn't know where I was supposed to look. I, I remember that being a fact. I think it's called. So is like, it called the pearl? Yeah, I think so. Oh, the girl's earring. pearl earring. Yeah, I think. pearl earring. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen it a lot of times since then. I just don't re recall ever seeing it before that trip. Yeah, but, but no, no, no version is as pretty as the one with you in it, though. Like that's that is that is the ultimate. If I had version. it but, handy, I would share it. But you know. Yes, but, but another lost opportunity. Thirteen thousand photos in my iPhone. How do you find any of them? You remove twelve thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, and then it's very easy. But I would have removed that one probably. Uh, people in the chat are saying hello, and uh, Mark says, um, do you have an opinion on Marlin fountain pens? I've used them, yes. I've used them, they write. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good that's opinion. As, actually, as much as my experience. I've never owned one, but I wouldn't be opposed to owning one. There was, at some point, there was that... Now I want to say it was the Aleph, but was it the Aleph or was it the Alpha? It was some sort of first letter of some alphabet, which has a flexi nib. And it was, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, but I, 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 I personally have not been blown away by Marlin pens, but, but they write, they, they but do. But I think their price point is, is correct for not being blown away. Yeah, I think it depends a bit on whether they are limited or not, because I think some of the limited versions are quite expensive, but that's a limited pen. So, right. the, but the, the regular, yeah. Yeah, I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. But I've never owned one. Lots of pens I haven't owned. 
if Marlon is watching, uh, your fantastic pen, yeah, send fantastic. us all. Uh... Wonderful. <laughs> Nothing ever better. So please send us a couple and we will. Uh... Yeah. We have a hello from New York City. I hope you're well, Jeff. Um, New York City. I don't know where anyone else is from. So if you're in the comments and you want to tell us where you're from, I will shout out if I happen to see it. Salt Lake City. Christopher is watching from Salt Lake City. Probably Salt Lake your time zone, Dr. Brown. Probably. Probably. But this is Pepper oh, Lake Town, so this is a different... Uh, I don't you know, really know. Different continent. <laughs> your, your Pacific... Uh, your mountain, I suppose. Mountain. Mountain. Uh, sorry. That's it. We have nothing more to say. We can end the show before it even starts. There was... Nice my, my long pause thought there. just now was that I just I just put a lot of uh, wonderful jasmine melting butter on my hands, but now every time I try to pick up my my teacup, I'm afraid yeah, that it will end up all over the you've table. Been drawing so, it. <laughs> yes, so it is a little precarious, but Arlo, this could be entertainment. Arlo says hello from Southern California. Helen says hello from Nova Scotia. Andrew is watching from sunny England. Sunny, he had to throw that in. Glasses, 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 hat, someone says. I wonder who's wearing the hat. Uh, Mike is watching from Russia. Craig from Charlotte, North Carolina. Sean is in Boston. Danielle is in Germany. I'm going to mispronounce this, Anthony. Oviedo, O-V-I-E-D-O. Oviedo, Florida. Matt's in Texas. Oh, I'm going to get this one wrong too. Flensburg, Germany. Flensburg. I have no, I'm not familiar with Flensburg. I have not been there. No. Must be in the right. north. <laughs> once, once this is all over, the whole thing, then we shall do, uh, is that a pen in your podcast on tour? And we will uh, tour, tour the world with this. We'll go to Flinburg first, because I <laughs> sounds cool. And then, you know, we'll just make our way up. Or down. Yeah, we could have done that. Uh, we have all been together in the Netherlands. Um, true. It is true. Did, did we all go? Yes, we were, the three of us were all at the Tilburg bench. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Ward, did you witness Dr. Brown tearing apart my instruction sheet from that vintage pen that I bought? Coffee no. in the morning after. No, it was coffee in the morning after. That's possible I... you were doing something at the time, though. That is possible. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have Oregon. Uh, it's getting by me here. Alberta, Portland, Oregon, Fort Wayne, I-N, India, Istanbul, oh, Waukesha, nice. Wisconsin. Roland, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. I'm just going to spell it. N-I-J-M-E-G-E-N. Nijbijan. <laughs> Perfect. One minute. One minute and we'll start the actual show. Denmark. Hello, Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. To start the show, I guess, uh, Ward, you know about this. I, I play a video. Do I? I play a video and then oh, we come yes. back. Okay, I'll play we'll the video. We'll go silent. Well, you know, I think it, it automatically mutes all microphones when the video is playing, so. There's only one way to find yeah, out. We just scream at the top yeah. of our lungs, you like scream. squealing pigs when this comes along. <laughs> we'll see. And then <laughs> when we're off the video, because you can't see the video when I play it, when the video ends, I just start talking and you know we're off to the races. And we're going to start right now. How's that sound? Podcast episode number seven for Sunday, April 57th, 2020. We are streaming to you live from the United States and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, viewers the world over, thank you for joining us today and welcome to another hyperbolic episode of Fountain Pen Televisions. My net televisions, plural. 
My name is Eric, and with me today, as per usual, the burger to my fries, Professor Dr. Stephen Brown. But wait, there's more. Our special guest, the Penn community's very own Renaissance man, Mr. Michael Ward. Gentlemen, how are you? Quite well. Uh, I, I am well, too, but I keep coming back to the fact that I, I seem to have heard you say April 57, but uh, clearly I... April 57 this is what I said, yes, because we're not counting... Actually, oh, I, I, see. I probably should have said March 57th. Let's, should we just do the whole thing again? Yes, let's, let's quit. April has started. I'm saying March 57th, and we're not going to get till April. You see, my birthday's in the beginning of April. We can't get there until we're back to some kind of normalcy around here where I could maybe travel or meet a friend or get a hug, you know, something like that. Did you know that there is a cosmological th i don't know why i suddenly sound like bill cosby i don't did you know there is a cosmological theory that basically states that that's in a nutshell universe keeps universe keeps expanding but at some point <clears throat> there will be so little density in in like particles and things there's not enough power to keep it sort of keep expanding so then it will start to shrink again shrink again shrink again shrink again and there even is some thought that maybe at that point time will reverse and that would mean that uh, effects will actually precede causes Huh. Whoa. Well, uh, let me get back to you on that. I mean, I did, I did yeah, know that the universe the is supposedly expanding, and I did know that there is a theory that it might reach a critical expansion, if you want to call it that. But the theory I heard is that when it gets there, it'll be the opposite of the Big Bang, and it'll just all collapse. In yeah, a, well, yeah, in an exactly. And, and the question is how exactly, because of course it's like a prediction, it's a theory. You can't, you can't really easily simulate this for obvious reasons. So well, stick yeah, around long enough to witness it. Of the two, I personally prefer Stevens. Uh. How awesome would that be that you that you like you you like I I my tea is spilled before I tilt the cup. Like how how interesting would that be? That would be a fascinating life, man. How would that be? I wonder if we would be able to adapt. Well, of course we would adapt. Of course we would. We would adapt. But then the show would also be over before it began. See, that's. Oh. Yeah, this is a Whoa, whole, this is a whole different subject. Blown, man. Whoa. What the hell? Something ah. really on. <laughs> I'm gonna spend my whole day wondering and stressing out about this. <laughs> yeah, this is a fascinating one to think about. Thank you for bringing that up. No, oh, my pleasure. I'm always willing to confuse people. But but speaking of Dr. Brown, what? Oh, yes, Michael Ward, you have the floor. I was gonna say before, before you. Oh, okay. Did you not have? Did you say something? Because I was cutting you off. Who? Oh. You, Michael. Oh, Ward. I was just saying it would be fascinating to get a bruise before stubbing your toe or something yeah, like you'd, that. You'd notice a bruise and say, "I wonder how I'm going to get that." <laughs> you could yeah. place bets. <laughs> I got a bruise. Ten to one odds. It was stubbing your toe, or did I trip on the stair? Or yeah, you could. It's a game. Back to That's what I said. New... I, I said April 57th. I meant March 57th. I'm ignoring all months past March until we get back to some sort of normalcy. Speaking of normalcy, I think for the benefit of all viewers, we should mention that the three of us agree. We have not discussed this previously, but I think we all agree. We should not ingest, inject, or otherwise imbibe in bleach, Lysol, or any other household or commercial disinfectant in any way, shape, way, shape or form. Do we all agree on that? You, yeah, you heard it here first. Maybe not first. Yeah. But we are the authorities on this. Yeah. Don't do it. Or the, uh, what was the other product that they used to, what was it, to clean aquariums or something? That was another uh, good one. It was another, another drug that they used to treat malaria, and the couple found that uh, uh, some of it was in something for their aquarium, and the man actually died. And the woman, yes. the last I heard, was in the hospital. I do believe she has recovered. Yeah. But, and I Tragic. do not have that drug memorized. Starts with an H. Don't yeah, I, I, and it was, was something. Uh, talk was some... to uh, uh, your doctor. Talk to your yes. doctor. If you think you found the miracle, miracle cure, talk to a doctor. Yeah. For example, my hand cream I'm looking at contains butyrospermum no wait but butyrospermium i don't know if i should ingest that but i'll uh let's move on let's move on don't try <laughs> uh, we skipped last week uh, uh i took a week off uh just to recover from taking time off uh have you received any new pens dr brown 
uh, anything um, that's going to come I, up on your on your reviews in the future? Yeah, I can I can tell you that um, if if all goes well, I should be having some stuff coming in. An exact timeline is hard to give at this point, especially because in our new universe, the pens will arrive before I receive them. Uh, but but beyond that, uh, um, there should be something coming in. And what I can briefly say is. If all is well, then it should be an exclusive platinum only available in Japan. It should have a Mont Blanc Moctezuma, which I kind of look forward to. Uh, there is most likely going to be a new retractable nib pen from a Japanese company. <laughs> and maybe some other things. Was that your siren? Your retractable, yeah, your retractable, that's my interesting retractable new pen siren. Is that the one I was? Yes. Yes. Uh, did you say you're getting uh, one of the Moctezumans? Yeah, but not for like not. I would not be owning it. It is no, a uh, loaner, me. as it were, from uh, Joost Appelbo, my yeah. house sponsor. Uh, I think, so um, uh, he was quite excited for it, and I, I look forward to seeing it. It looks I, think we'll blah, I don't have a picture ready. I didn't know we were going to talk about that, um, but it looks like it has. A, I didn't even I know mean, I was going to get. I haven't seen it in real life. I've seen pictures. It looks like it has a very long cap that goes down to the end, and then when I pull it off. I hope it posts. I don't even know. I have no. I, it looks interesting. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, so do I. So it's always. I mean, Mont Blanc. Like, no matter what your opinion on it is, they they do put a lot of effort into these kinds of pens. They do. It's hard to ignore. So I, I'll be interested to, to check it out. Keep well, you posted. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch that. I'll watch that. When is that getting here? Just so I know. Just so I, know. I have no idea because I don't even think it's sent yet. Because of course, all like your supply is. Like he, for some reason, apparently mail is delayed a bit at this point in time. Um, so he, he has to wait. Yeah, nobody understands why, but so he has to wait for some things as well. But it, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty substantial care package that will be coming this way. So I, uh, I very much look forward to it. I, I did notice no uh, this past week that Ackerman in The Hague reopened with some social distancing, quite, quite severe social distancing guidelines, but at least they're open. Two yeah. people in the store at once, and they they put arrows on the floor, and you walk this way and go that way, and um, we've all been to that store. So yeah, two I yeah. think is maximum. Sure. It's 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 big enough for two people, but we've also seen it very crowded. Especially on Saturday afternoons, yeah. it's it's very crowded. But I'm 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 happy they've reopened because I mean that is. Akamon is not a massive chain, right? It's that it's that store. So I'm I'm happy that they were able to. Uh, to open under these circumstances. Yeah, I was happy to see that too, especially, and you know, uh, <laughs> some people are pressuring us to reopen everything, and I think that's an error, and but we're gonna have to do something. We can't just sit at home for 18 months. There has to be some sort of compromise, and I think Ackerman did a good thing uh, with the compromises. Uh, two people, and don't stand too close to each other, <laughs> They're, they're setting the rules. Now, I don't know if you can do that in every business. Obviously, you can't. But little by little, we're going to have to make uh, some sort of changes that will allow us to get back to some sort of out-of-the-home life. And they took a good step. I like it. Now, one question that I do have is, can precious resin be disinfected? Is it possible? Or will it just... And then you have a liquid pen. I don't know. I have not tried this. I don't really want to. Precious it's resin can be yeah. washed with soap and water. Soap and water. Yeah, they say soap kills the virus. So they do say, and and I think I think that could also be um, the subtitle of my autobiography: S. B. R. E. Brown: colon, Soap and Water. Soap and water. I think it's. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Moving right along. What's your newest pen acquisition there, Mr. Ward? Oh, I think I know what it is. My new... I think I... I, I it might, be, it might be the one I purchased for you. Hmm? Uh, this is true. This is, this is the pen you purchased for me. <laughs> and now that I think about it properly, this would be my newest pen acquisition. Oh, I see, I have the twins. I have the twins. Ah. Did you get uh, yours yet? Yes, Steven? I bought Aaron's. I have received nothing. Okay, yes. You can tell the story, uh, Michael. Go ahead. Well, I mean, Eric said he bought this for me, and yes, Eric. 
married and I just oh, uh, and that's not exactly how it went on the day of but that's okay you're gonna have to start that story all over again because you kind of froze in the middle of it so you have this is your chance to improve that story you have the floor oh I have the floor I was just saying that this is the pen that you bought for me and then your pen is the one that I bought for you and uh, there was a little bit of a confusion at the at the table when we got them um, but well uh, for anyone who doesn't recognize them they are the shown design pocket six and these we found at the Philadelphia pen show in January and we liked them because these were the uh, last two black ones that he had that are numbered yeah. He numbered the first. What number hundred. is yours? Oh, I forget. I, I didn't really care about that. I liked that it had a number. I didn't care which number it was. So I bought the one that Michael Ward actually wanted, and so we had to switch afterwards. And so yes. now we say that he bought me this pen, and I bought him that pen. <laughs> Eric was nice enough to switch me when I when I asked him if I could have that one instead. Do you remember the number you had? A little thing. Well, I can look at. I. You say you forget. <laughs> I never find. I can never holding. find it, and I don't have the yeah. bright lights on, and I don't have my loop handy, so I'm not going to look for it. But thank you yeah, for have... letting me telling, making me tell everybody that I can't see the damn number. I have 87. I think yours was like 74 or something. I was like thinking that. 74, like... but I didn't want to infect your mind, so I have 74. <laughs> but I acquired that pen at the same time as I acquired two others that are also here. Oh. Do share. I got my two matching. Well, they don't match, but they're the same model. I have two uh, Franklin Kristoff twenties here. Uh, why did you buy two? Why did I buy two? They're just they well. They're pretty. Um, I was humming and hawing at the table over which of these two styles I wanted. And that one there. In your nose in front of your and nose. That one there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I couldn't decide, and then somebody, I don't remember who, proposed, well, if you can't decide, buy both. Oh, and... that was Scott Franklin, right? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, but the reason I went with the uh, with the 20 is was specifically for, in this pen, I have a giant extra, 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 extra fine nib, but when I put it in a regular fountain pen, it sits, for me, for my liking anyways, too far away from my hands. And with the 20, the nib is slightly recessed into uh, the section so that the point can be slightly closer to my fingers than it would be with a regular uh, large nib. So you, you like, so the, like the, the, the length of the nib is what you like most about it, that it isn't a very long nib. Or lack thereof. Or, yes, or lack thereof. Well, yeah, it's, I like the, I wanted the large nib, but I want the large nib to be closer. I want my cake and I want to eat it and I want it to not make me fat and a whole bunch of other things. Anyway. Demanding. While you're talking, by the way, Marco, I'm sorry, Marco, it's macro, I always get that wrong, is asking three questions for, specifically for you, Michael. Are you ready oh. for these? These are, you don't even know what's coming. What does your quote unquote regular script look like as you're signing checks or writing a letter? Would it happen to be uh, the, the picture I have of the uh, the the wooden the the wooden vanishing point is that your regular script? Oh, that's still cursive, right? Yeah, that's script. That would be so. The picture I sent you, that one, it would be my regular, just cursive. But I write, and I should have sent you a photo of this. I write in block capitals when I'm taking notes or. Okay, but uh, the the question is your regular script, and so I don't think that's capitals. I'm gonna put the picture up. Okay, so, I've got yeah. a picture of your your regular script right now. Uh, and I have seen this before, uh, many times when you're just writing, and I would say that this is your regular script. What do you call this? This is a form of Spencerian, isn't it? It's basically just, I mean, it's business writing, essentially. It's just non-fancy. <laughs> you can't look at Spencerian. this and say it's non-fancy, but I'll let you get away with it. I've heard it's called Warderian. <laughs> it's Warderian. Question number two. Warderian. How was your childhood penmanship? Was it good, bad, amazing? Um, what was it? I won't say amazing. I 
I've always been a relatively artistic, so my penmanship has always been decent. Uh, I mean, my I wasn't learning Palmer method or fancy styles of script growing up. I just learned your basic, I mean, what most kids, I won't say nowadays, but when I was in school, learned. And that's just how I wrote. I always wrote very, very tiny. So it never always, it never looked the best because it was always really small. So it was probably cramped and whatnot. Uh, but I wrote cursive. I liked cursive. I never liked printing. So I always wrote in cursive once I learned it. Okay. And question number three, do you, and if not, why not design seals for sealing wax? That's a good oh. idea. I don't think I've ever seen you do one, but you could do that. I don't, but I have, um, <laughs> actually, once upon a time. That was not, part of that, that was not one of the multiple choice answers. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 2002, when I lived in Japan, um, I carved an Astro Boy out of a piece of, I don't remember the kind of stone that it was. Um, somebody that I worked with gave me some tools and a bag of basically stones to make a little stamp and I carved Astro Boy's head out of them. And then from there I wanted to carve proper uh, wax seals, but I never have since then. Something you might consider I mean, though? It, yeah, it's something that I've I've wanted to do, but I want to do, I would like to do it in stone or in metal and I don't have the proper engraving tools to do it that way. Someday. I could do wood, but then you get too much grain and all that kind of stuff when you're doing a seal. So Someday, someday, someday. Something to look forward to. I want to talk just for a moment about Peniter, Peniter Avatar UR pens. They're sort of, they're, they're being called demos because they're kind of see-through-ish. And um, uh, they look cool. I have not touched one. I have not seen one in real life. Red wine, amber, and sky blue. I hope to run across one of these at some point. Um, I know the two of you gentlemen cannot see the picture that I am putting on the screen. I'm um, looking here. Are you looking? Are you looking? But mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I especially like the yellow one, the amber one. It doesn't completely remind me of, but it is rep reminiscent of the Omos that I had. Remember that, Brown? The, yes, the, the uh, fort, uh, vodka vodka lemon which one was that? Yeah. yeah, some some lemon drink, vodka, yeah. right? It was. I got it at Lay Wines. Yeah. Back in the day when we could go places, remember those days? Yeah. <laughs> there was a, there was a time. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, put that picture out there. I'm going to put another picture up here. It's a Franklin Kristoff, believe it or not. It's a Model 45. Is that the model you liked? I forget already. I know we just talked about it. Michael Ward. The, I like the Model 20, 20. is the one that I have. Then you I like you wouldn't many. be interested in the Model 45 6 and Candy. This, um, they put up, I, I want to say yesterday, it might have been the day before, in very limited quantities in their stock room. Um, but I just liked it. I said, I'm going to share that. I did not get one, um, but I think everyone else should. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I just wanted to say sex on the show, so I had to pull that pen out. I want to also share... Uh, the a little known fact is that it is actually sex, as in sex in German. Sex. All right. Any other, any other No, comments? we don't have to censor ourselves. Yes, I'm just saying, I'm just saying sex. I want to shout out to gentlemanstationer.com, who... Uh, recently posted on his blog, that you can find at gentlemanstationer.com, uh, part five of his series of best, best paper for everyday writing. And uh, if, if you like long reads and good information, I suggest you go check it out. Uh, and he has five parts because he breaks it down into categories. I think he started with notebooks uh, and then he went through it and part five touches on pads and loose leaf and there's everything in between. And, uh, you know, I, I'm always on the lookout for, I have my favorite papers, but I like to try new papers as well. And, and I like reading all that. So I suggest anyone who's interested in paper uh, do the same. And I wanted to say that this week I came across, for the first time in real life, Y Studio 
uh, writing oh, instruments. Yeah. Um, I was especially impressed with their sketch sketch pencil. I will throw a picture on the screen. Uh, it looks much like any other metal mechanical pencil, but it's a, a 2.0 lead, so it's thicker than most. Uh, you pull the back off, and instead of finding an eraser, you find a sharpener for the lead point. And it's made of brass and has a black coating on it. I'm not sure what the coating is. Uh, so it's got a good heft and feels really good in the hand. Uh, the packaging is really cool, too, and they include um, a piece of sandpaper, so you can start uh, getting it to, giving it that mojo. It'll, uh, I guess it'll eventually wear off, especially it's, it's multifaceted, so where the facets meet, it will wear off there first, but you can speed things up with the sandpaper. They also make a desk pen. Uh, I'll show the picture. Um, and by desk pen, I mean one that stands up and is always at the ready. So that uh, base that you're looking at is actually the cap, and it's a very heavy brass base. And you just put the pen in it, and you put this, uh, you know, reminiscent of what I suppose Banks had in the 50s, <laughs> where you had to go in and take the pen out of the inkwell. Um, and so those, that's what I wanted to share before we moved on to the star of the show. Y Studio is an interesting brand. I have reviewed one of their pens at some point. Uh, and it is, I, I did I did like the packaging because there was a little, uh, I recall some sort of wooden tube and a lanyard. So you can you can put the pen, put the, 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 the this, this lanyard through your pants. You can carry it around your neck, but you can also put the cap of the, oh, this is really complicated to explain. The, the cap of the tube has a slit, which you first put through the actual bit of leather string. And then you can tube, you can close that tube, so you can carry around the pen in its tube around your neck, which is a, a waste of time to then grab your pen. But theoretically, you could do that, and it's it's neat. Some people would love that. It it struck me as very Japanese thing, where they had these sorts of things for Netsuki, those things they had with, to 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 weigh stuff and put it in the sash, like samurai did, etc. Um, so I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of neat. And they, they come with a lot of stuff, and I like the fact that it comes with a little, because mine also came with a little uh, uh, piece of sandpaper, so you can you can make it as worn looking as you like, which is kind of neat. Yeah, I think they call it uh, the, the portable, the one that has the lanyard. Yes, uh, correct. It comes with a lanyard, it also comes with a brass uh, hook type thing that I would imagine you could put on your backpack or something. So that yeah. your pen is always at the ready. Of course, I just use one of the pockets in my backpack. But no, the designs are really nice. You had something to say, Mr. Ward. Oh, I was just going to, where are they from? Uh, yeah. Taiwan. I, I, I want to say yeah, Taiwan. that's what I want to say too. Yeah. Okay. So I recall cool. it anyway. From yeah. Y Studio. My comment was going to be about the fake roughing up the surface or making it vintage before it's vintage i like that although in our current reality it would be vintage right. before you got it you it, it when yes. it's vintage and it becomes Man. younger yeah. we're all going to become yeah. uh, <laughs> exactly. benjamin buttons right yeah Ooh. yeah yeah except i just want to call be called benjamin zipper is that okay sure sure <laughs> like your name you can do whatever you like okay i'll be benjamin fly yes thank you <laughs> I'm going to show a video here, during which time I think we will be muted, but I'll turn the mute off so we can actually talk through it. Uh, Michael, it is the video of you writing Iampeth and then writing the, the, the letters out. So it's your Spencerian. Ah. Uh, uh, but before we watch it, what is Iampeth? Iampeth is the International Association of Master Penmen, Engrossers, and Teachers of Handwriting. It is just that it is an association a group of essentially penmen or calligraphers are you part of this group i am indeed what is an engrosser may i just very briefly interject that in the current reality of this universe it is now actually i was path but go on <laughs> i will be path potentially uh, engrossers were essentially like uh certificate designers and whatnot it's like an engrossing script that was used on certificates in America. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's, it's a script, a typeface of some kind. Yeah. Engrosser. Okay, I'm gonna, and and you are uh, writing out an iambeth in the uh, Spencerian. 
Yes, this is highly ornamental penmanship, Spencer. Highly ornamental. Okay, I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to hit our mute button so you can actually talk if you want to talk. Okay, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I had to speed it up a little, Mr. Ward, because it was a long video. A slow video, yeah. Uh, but uh, it still isn't too far off from your speed, because uh, you do like to do speedy Spencerian, don't you? Yes, I do. The, uh, on that video in the original, the Iampeth was written, yeah, regular speed, and then all the individual words were written. I think they were sped up, if I remember correctly. Not on the video I got, so... Oh, the video you got, it's just all... Oh, that's so, one that I put on my IGTV, so it's all regular speed, it's all okay. one speed. But, um, the Inko Rymo video I sent is Yeah, the, the Inko Rymo does have that, and we'll be seeing that shortly. Okay. Uh, does anyone ever tell you that this is difficult to read? I mean, yes. the font itself, one, because we're not used to fact, seeing such ornamental script. One of my best friends from from back home when I was a kid that I still talk to a lot, to this day, everything I post, he'll comment, what does it say? Or he'll he'll make bad guesses. Literally, now it's just become a joke that no matter what I post, he'll make some terrible uh, suggestion, but lots of people can't read it. Uh, which to me is unfortunate, but I get it. I mean, I don't know if if I never learned ornamental cursive capitals, I wouldn't be able to know what the heck it says either. Either they're very different than standard cursive, and definitely like Roman letters and things like that. So, and the hairlines are are so very thin. And what kind of pen is this that you're using? You are back on screen, by the way. The video has ended. an oblique holder and a I don't remember exactly what nib it would probably be the Leonard Principle okay, but uh, it's a, EF it's a dip, nib it's a, called it's a, a dip, nib, dip yeah. nib and you put it in an oblique yes. holder I think I have a picture of an oblique holder uh, you? acrylic acrylic now what's the scoop on this acrylic Zenarian pen holder that I'm, oh. I'm about to show this picture it's on screen now it's gorgeous it looks acrylic sweet it is. I mean, I think it is. Um, <laughs> did you make it? I did indeed. This was... I guess this was right before quarantine started. Um, there are a few really good pen makers on the internet that make these beautiful, clear um, pens, oblique holders, and I wanted one. And years ago, for reasons I can't remember, I had ordered some acrylic rod stock that I've just kind of had in my junk drawer. Um, and I was bored one day and decided to uh, see if I could make an acrylic pen out of it. I never made a, a, a fully carved pen Are you about to tell me before. that you made this pen holder without a lathe? I put it in a drill. Did you? <laughs> you put a piece of rod stock in a drill. Yeah, I will. And what were you? I have did another you just piece use right sandpaper? here. I... What did you cut it with? The original size. It's about teeth. Teeth. Yeah, you gnawed on it as it spun around. <laughs> yeah, I spun it and then, like how those videos of the people with the corn on the cob. Um, yeah, I, uh, I just put it in the drill and then I just one hand on the drill, the other hand holding sandpaper, and I just Fantastic. went at it with it with is, it a is really. I didn't think it was, I'll be honest, I didn't think it was going to turn out nearly this uh, gorgeous. It turned out, I couldn't imagine it turning out any better than it really did. How did um, you make the uh, notch for the uh, nib holder? The, yeah, the Japanese pull saw over here that I just, I cut it in with a saw. I mean, any saw would work. And then I happen to have a, a box of metal flanges from the Zenarian College that I got years ago. And so I just epoxied that in there, and it was done. Now, do you use this pen, or does it just sit on your desk for a uh, background prop in your photographs? I do. I use it sometimes, but it's <laughs> for me, it, I have a lot of pens. I own a lot of oblique holders. Like, around my desk right now, I could probably count at least 20. And I, 
I go through phases of having what I call my workhorse pens. So this is the pen that I currently use every day. And in a few weeks, it might swap to another one. So I did use this one for a couple weeks after making it. Um, but there is a slight fear because it is so long and it's a little on the fragile side. Or, it, I mean, I've never broken one, so I don't, I assume it's on the fragile side because it's very thin. I mean, there's just a potential that I'll snag it on my shirt or something like that. So it is now, it is displayed. It's just on my counter, but I could use it at any time. It works exactly the same because it's not heavy. So it, there's no difference in using this versus any of the other pens that I use on a daily basis. It just looks different. It is gorgeous. We have some questions coming at you. Okay. They are directed to you since you're the only one who could answer these. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You could probably try. Iampeth members seem to focus on Spencerian business and grocers, etc. Do any of these folks practice and or teach cursive italic handwriting? I want to say yes, but I'm going to do a poor job of naming who would and Well, if I what wanted to find a, a member of Iampeth who actually offers teaching, uh, and, and then I could look through those teachers to see if they teach Cursive Italic, could I, is there a yeah, website you could for go Iampeth? To, yes, you can go to iampeth.com, I-A-M-P-E-T-H dot com, and they'll give the Actually, that is, I was, I was past Dr. Kane. <laughs> so you, uh, many you think I so but you're not sure who they might be yeah many of the iampeth calligraphers are are accomplished calligraphers in many styles um when iampeth first started it was primarily it was pointed pen it was spencerian business writing um and then engrossing came into the work and so that was the more certificate stuff and then it's it has expanded over the years into accommodating more and more of the calligraphic styles. Um, but most of the calligraphers that that teach for Iampeth and are members of Iampeth do many of the styles, especially the ones that are, there's many that s specialize in the broad pen scripts or the broad pen styles. So there would be people up there that can do and do teach cursive italic writing. Okay. What is your, I am not one of what is your favorite ink uh, for, with which you write script? Do you have a favorite ink? I do. I use walnut script or walnut <laughs> ink. <laughs> um, I use walnut ink. I've always, since I first got into even just fountain pens before I got into penmanship, I really like sepia. I like brown. I'm a fan of like SBRE brown ink, for example. Who I like be? the color. Yeah, who wouldn't be? <laughs> <laughs> Valid question. I really like just a, I like sepia. Uh, I like yeah. the, the old look. So I prefer writing. Like my first ink I think I ever purchased when I first got into fountain pens many years ago was Noodler's just standard brown. I really like the look of Noodler's standard brown ink. Um, so in the calligraphy world, I. Uh, many of the, the best inks for the hairlines and whatnot that I use are like iron gall inks that can be a bit on the corrosive side for nibs, just meaning that our nibs are disposable and using iron gall ink, you'll wear out a nib eventually. Um, but using a walnut ink, it doesn't have that same acidity or same corrosiveness to the nib, so I can get more longevity out of my nib. So it looks good and it doesn't hurt my tools. So I use it a lot. It's not permanent, unfortunately. It's still it's not water fast, but it's my go-to. Walnut. Uh, is it uh, acrylic or lucite, your pen holder? I think acrylic, but I honestly, I, I bought this stock so long ago. I just bought a bunch of these off of eBay many years ago. I don't remember exactly what they are. I mean, it could be plexiglass for all I know. I'd, it's, uh, I'm pretty did, sure. It's how did you good. polish it? What was the final? Uh, polish? Same thing. It was in the drill. I just put the drill onto its high speed setting. I got some, uh, once I went. I used micro mesh pads to get it to a fine grit, and then to do the final polish, which is when the part that blew me away because I didn't also think I'd be able to get it super super clear. 
using just a drill and not a high speed lathe. But I used Silvo, uh, the similar to Brasso, but the store that I went to didn't have Brasso at the time. But I got Silvo, put it on a just a paper towel, and it polished right up. It, it certainly did. It's gorgeous. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, besides Spencerian script and penmanship in general, uh, you do leather work, and in fact, you do some penmanship on leather, don't you? I do. Uh, because you started doing blotters, and I don't think I'm going to have a picture of a blotter, but you you put a Spencerian name at the top, like you could put my name at the top of my blotter, and it would be in Spencerian, and this would be debossed into the blotter. Into the blotter. Yes. I use a, a hot tool, and I could burn. I started burning Spencerian into leather many years ago. And now you've moved on. You still do that, but you've added something to it, and that is the, the foiling, correct? The foiling, yes. Foiling. I do hand foiling. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by hand foiling? Uh, well, the foil and whatnot that I use, anytime you have shoes or bags that have the logos that are hot pressed oh. into the leather, so they're debossed, that's, um, that's the foil, essentially, that I use. I've just found a process where I can do it by hand. So if I wanted to design, I don't have to get a brass die cut and use the and a hot press to press it in just for a one-off piece. I found a way that I could write on foil. Um, so I could just do one-off designs that are super elaborate. And you do this on blotters and books? What did you do? Uh, I have the video for the Thomas Financial. What was that? Was that a book? Was it a blotter? That was a blotter. They had ordered uh, three desk blotters for their office. Okay. Um, and so then I, they sent me their Do you uh, deboss it first and then foil it, or does the foiling and debossing happen, happen at the same time? Foil first, then I deboss. Oh, foil first. So when, yeah. you, when you pull the foil back, it's not quite finished. Yeah, like when you see it in the videos and I pull the foil, yeah. that's, it's, depending on the leather, sometimes, it will have a little bit of deboss because there is heat used and whatnot, and I use pressure when I'm writing. But then I go back after and I sort of add the deboss onto the foil. You're you're heating the the foil and debossing the leather more. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna play the uh, the Thomas Financial peel away. That's all I got. I, mean, I didn't get any of you actually applying the foil, but when you're through with your whatever heat thing that you use to put the foil onto it, you peel the foil away and it stays on. I'm just going to play it. We'll probably go mute. It's a very short video. Okay, so um, that sound is pretty cool too. <laughs> I like that it's extremely satisfying. The peel is extremely satisfying, but also very stressful because sometimes the foiling doesn't, I can't necessarily tell when it's working and when it's not working. I just assume that it's working under the foil. And when you peel, you find out if it worked or not. So it's a very much a cross your fingers moment every time. Uh, here's, a, here's a dilemma that I have. If, it, if, if the foiling does not work, is it foiled? Semi or is yes. it foiled? Now this is this is like a mind blowing thing again. Like if it does work, oh, I see. is it foiled? Rats or foiled is it again. Not... It's foiled. Uh, In either way, it's foiled. It's either successfully gold leaf foiled or the whole thing is foiled. No good. It's foiled. It's been... Whoa! This is a mind blowing episode with all these <laughs> these paradoxes and. <laughs> anyway, as you were. Mind expanding Sunday. And where do I get a blotter if I want a blotter? Uh, on my Etsy page. Oh, you have an Etsy page. Okay. I do have an Etsy page. We'll find that and we'll put the link to it in the description of this video. Um, and Anything can, can, MRMG Ward is me. Everything's listed under the, that same thing. MRMG Ward. Mr. MG Ward. Okay. Yep. Um, and your carving. Yeah. I think I have a picture. That is my here. newest favorite thing to I do. I only have a couple pictures and they're, the, I have to... Uh, ask they're both pictures that i have are end carvings on pen holders but yes. where so you must start with pen holders that have a big blob of wood at the end or the, the whole thing yeah 
would you i could get one i have to leave camera for two leave. seconds it's just right behind me. i can I okay can it's i mean it's i'm still right here i just have to move oh, some things leave. around you haven't left at all oh well then i didn't have to leave. i just had to lean behind me everything is everything i use is pretty much at arm's reach which is convenient so chris yoke of the yoke pen company oh, okay. does this part of the pen sort of the business end and then he leaves a long tail slightly thicker than I would have it tail so that I don't snap them when I'm carving them and then a chunk of wood okay on and the you end. turn those into interest do you happen to have because I don't have a picture of it do you have your top half there handy yes the top hat was the first pen it's, I gotta go out of frame sorry it was the first pen I ever, ever carved uh, in 2015 and it was I don't know if the camera will be able to show yeah, it stop right there it? that's nice that's a beautiful top hat. So you turn that blob of wood into a top hat, and I'm going to show a picture of Mickey, uh, which I happen to have here. Uh, and I think this, someone asked you to make this. This is like a commission, right? Oh. And in Indonesia asked me to carve a Mickey Mouse holder for them. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to show the octopus. Ah. Which, uh, the picture I have is a very dark picture. Okay. I'll bet people could see it. Has it been posted to your Instagram? It hasn't, because I just did. I just took photos of it yesterday, so it will be soon. Okay, I but can... this this octopus has. Uh, I'm assuming eight. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. Uh, and that uh, all the legs or tentacles are wrapped around, and you, this must have been incredibly difficult to plan. I would say. Without question, the most difficult thing I've ever challenged myself to do, especially at this size, it's all, I mean, it's its about an inch tall, the actual carving, maybe a little bit less than that. It's very tiny. And do you, um, do you see it in your head when you're attacking the wood, or do you make plans on paper or maybe a model of some kind out of clay? Most of the carvings I do, I just kind of go for it. I, I sketch right on the little blob of wood, and I just kind of carve away and figure it out as I go. But this one, I actually started this about three years ago. I carved the top of the head, I guess, the, the top part. And then I got to the tentacles and my brain basically exploded. Um, I had no idea, just cause like two tentacles are holding onto the pen and the other tentacles are wrapping around the tentacle around. And I just couldn't wrap my head around um, no pun intended. how it all went together. So, I like looked at it for a long time and then I gave up until about, I guess a month ago, I decided to revisit it. And I got some plaster scene and molded, I had done drawings and stuff, but I had molded a plaster scene version of a octopus actually, which I have. If I can get it out of here. I molded just out of okay so you, so it's you made a model of some kind yeah i had to it was the only way that i could visualize what needed to be carved and what didn't it was exceptionally difficult and to now, figure out now you're going to start mass producing them um <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 um maybe the next project can be a centipede with a, <clears throat> with all the legs all wrapped around then you can you can sort of graduate to increasing <laughs> more, more images every time i really want to do a dragon that's like wrapping i have to get more pens made because more than just the blob i want to have the whole dragon sort of like oh yeah come up the whole length of the pen that'd be very cool and yeah, yeah. this personal little silly challenges uh the golden snitch was a fun one to carve a long time ago that one right there, tiny little oh, wow. now, Harry see, that Potter looks golden snake. That, that looks This one looks is... Fragile. It looks like it will take the off flying, are, too. It's scary. It will be... It was, about a week ago, gilded in 23 karat gold, the, the ball part, and the wings were in genuine silver leaf. Um, but the wings tarnished, and I couldn't polish them clean, so I un de-gilded i took off the the gilding on the whole thing refined the design because i'm better at carving now and then in a couple weeks when i get some new 12 karat gold 
I will foil the ball again in 23 carat and the wings in 12 carat, which looks silver. So it will be fully properly gilded and shiny again. Your 12 carat leaf is sitting in my mailbox even as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it arrived yesterday. Yes, it did. I, I didn't go pick it up, but I'll get it today. <laughs> That's okay. Um, <laughs> I also want to, I'm going to show a picture of some leather work that you do. I don't know what you call this. Um, uh, the, I'm, I've got a Coke bottle and your clock face. Ah. And so what is this? You put a leather uh, Coke label on a Coke bottle? Yeah. It would, everything's at arm reach. Um, oh, we yes. can't see you right now. Here, let me. Oh, that's okay. Okay, we're back to you. <laughs> yeah, that's my Coke bottle. I'm not usually a, a a Coke or a soda or a pop drinker, but a while, not too long ago, I was in the grocery store and I saw the cane sugar Coke, and I've started only buying drinks and things in glass bottles. I try not to buy anything in plastic bottles anymore, or as much as possible. And they had Coke. It was cane sugar in glass bottles, so I've gotten now in the habit of just having a few bottles in my fridge and I drank one after the other day and then as has been sort of the the theme of your the, life the way it is for quarantine yeah well especially in quarantine it's very much it's how the clock happened too I was cooking dinner I looked at the clock and I thought I'm gonna make that leather and that's the same thing I looked the coke bottle was sitting beside me empty and my water bottle is wrapped in leather, and I just, I was looking for things to wrap. Can I so see? Basically, the, everything is in arm's reach. Can I see the bottle again? I want to specifically see uh, the label first. And uh, so that's that's another example of uh, the gold foiling into leather, correct? Yep. And in the back, yep. I want to see the stitching. Now, uh, this looks like some stitching in place. Did you do this? Yeah. Okay. So everything that I wrap ends up, I don't stitch it and then apply it to something. It's all specifically conformed. Like with the water bottle, this leather is pulled very, very tight over the middle. Um, so this piece of leather is actually quite wonky shaped. It's got a, so that it fits perfectly around the leather wow. or around the bottle, sorry. And I'm going to put the picture back up so we can see the clock, unless you have the clock sitting within arm's reach. Because it seems, I actually don't. Seems, okay. I meant to bring it in, I'm and going I to forgot. The clock so. back up. This was, as I recall from your Instagram feed, just an IKEA clock that you thought yeah. could be spruced up. And so you made this new clock face for it out of leather, and uh, I guess this is just debossed. There's not black foiling on that, is there? Yep, it's black foil on brown leather. <laughs> so it's even foiled. Yes. And this is just what you do on any a, given day. You're cooking dinner and you say, I need to fix that clock. And you next thing you know, you've was, taken the whole thing apart. You've made a new dial. This is your literally, life. As I, was, as I was boiling water, I was making just simple pasta. And as the water was boiling, I looked at the clock and I said, yeah, I'm going to replace that face, the dial. And before the water was done, before the pasta was done, the clock was in pieces on my table. Um, and then I obviously had to stop working on the clock to go eat and whatnot. And then I kept working on the clock after that. I designed a clock face for it, uh, in Illustrator and then foiled it foiled and again. put it all back this, together. This leather, getting back to this leather stitching, didn't you say in Philadelphia that you were planning to uh, leatherize, uh, 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 Pilot Decimo? I want to. It is a plan of mine. My favorite fountain pen is my vanishing point. Um, my black bamboo vanishing point. Um, but I want to... I want a thinner one. So I want to have a Decimo. And I, my plan is to acquire a Decimo and then grit my teeth and cringe and basically destroy it. I want to remove the existing material and replace it with leather so that it doesn't get any fatter and it's not wrapped i want it to look like it was manufactured with leather uh, interesting so uh, you're looking for a beat up decimal a used one you don't want to just go buy a new one 
Yeah, I mean, I, de- I, I could just buy a Decimo and wreck it, but that feels like, I don't know, that I, does that that feels sacrilegious to get something nice and new well, and destroy it. If you can find one that is already beat up, maybe someone's not using it. I don't the happen to have a Decimo. One. I don't know. Uh, Dr. Brown, do you have a Decimo? I have no Decimo. <clears throat> Sorry, no, I don't. All right. Well, if anyone has a Decimo that they uh, don't use and it's already beat up a little bit and could be experimented upon. Um, <laughs> I need to find that like that drawer Decimo that's been rolling right. around or that's been beat up in somebody's purse or something like that for a couple of years that that has lost its luster. And then I, and like I won't to, and I won't feel as bad. I would like to see <laughs> when that. I wreck it. I would like to see that. I'm gonna go back to your uh, uh Spencerian for a second because I still have one more picture and it's the wall picture. So I can only assume that someone paid you to put Spencerian on a wall. Um oh, because it looks works. quite large. And I want to know what size pen you use for this. I'm showing the picture right now. Uh, This was in a dance studio uh, in northern Alberta where, yeah, they asked me to come in. They had four studios uh, in their building, and they wanted me to paint four different words. There was be tenacious, be brave, uh, be authentic, and be an inspiration. We're looking at be an inspiration, yeah. It's the beat inspiration was the biggest. The other ones get smaller as they go. Oh, um, I think it, it, no one's standing here in the picture about how wide is it? I feel like it's about 40 feet. It's wow, quite big. Okay, it's huge then, huge. Like I I can't reach the top of the letters in, even at the very beginning of that one. Uh, the If you think of there's a bar in front of it, you can see the little bar. Yeah. There's two bars. That's a right. that's a ballet bar, so it probably sits around oh. what, four feet off the floor or something yeah. like that. Three, three yes, something, four feet. So th- this was not done. You didn't just go in there and apply uh, some pre-cut vinyl. Did you? No. You painted this on the wall. Yes. They were ori- we were originally going to do pre-cut vinyl, um, but I can't remember why. Uh, but I was able to convince the studio owner, who luckily is a friend of mine to have me just paint it and i'm really really glad they did because it would have been really annoying to even apply i can't imagine a vinyl person trying to apply that it would be very finicky work especially around the bar and stuff like that so yeah i came in um nothing was pre-designed i got a pencil i used a piece of uh, painter's tape to give me a baseline so that i at least had it on a straight line and just started writing with a pencil, then backing up and seeing how it looked, trying to get the spacing right. How long did and this take? You got to say an hour. Right? I did. Well, I don't remember the specific time for each one. Uh, the designing, well, the whole thing took four days. Okay. Uh, all four, not each, all four murals took four days. It was basically, it worked out to like a day a mural. And I worked pretty much, not all day, but most of the day, uh, and then painted into the evenings listeners put an audiobook on my phone everybody that was working in the studio went home and i stayed in the studio till the wee hours the wee hours i'm going to show one more picture here um and this is uh it shows the word spencerian gold foiled into leather but it also shows a pen holder that has been uh, uh covered in leather yeah is this what you plan to do with the decimo Something similar to that, um, that specific oblique holder, the leather is wrapped to avoid where the grip is of the, of the pen. I was going to say, the wrapping is interesting, but I figure that's where your fingers don't want anything underneath them or something. Yeah, it's the, the leather or the wrapping sort of goes in a spiral so that it avoids where your fingers are. The decimo would be more a straight seam. Straight seam. Or potentially, if I was using glue and whatnot, there's also a way that I could possibly shave the leather so it kind of overlaps itself and is glued to itself, and then there may be no stitching at all. I honestly don't know. I won't know until I experiment with one. Um, and that gold uh, foiling isn't mine. That's not a. That's a cover of a book. Oh, that's a cover of a book. Okay. Yes, I would love to say that that is that was my Spencerian, but that's actually key to practical penmanship in Spencerian. A vin- so, oh, so is it gold foil though, or is it just a printed? It is, yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex in in the comments does uh, 
make a good point uh, with the comment that's, wow, you did no pre-design on that wall? Because I have seen people who do murals and generally they draw it. Uh, and then at least some of them um, project that drawing onto the wall and then just put the lines based on the projection. You did not do this? You just stood back that and was, did this and did that? My original plan was to do it that way. Um, I, at the time, I didn't have a projector. I have a projector now. I didn't so have a projector. I actually so I got a projector. I had a. I got a projector after that project. It's actually right here. My little projector, <laughs> specifically room. for um, doing that type of work uh, in the future for more complicated designs and stuff. But I was going to potentially do it that way, um, and then I got in there and I, I just really quickly decided. I just did a sketch on paper and when I say quickly like legitimately within like probably less than two to five minutes just really quickly did a sketch showed the the studio owner and be like how's that look like is that the that sort of good. idea you want and they would if they liked something they would say they liked it if something like oh can that be a little different in that part or is different people like different things but really quickly had a general idea of where the just for the flourishes would go and then yeah I just Got a pencil. There's a few videos that I put on my Instagram of me using my whole body to, because the ovals are like lot bigger than my arm can reach. So I'm sort of using my whole body to try to write it on the wall. And then a couple times I wrote the whole thing, and then ended up having like eight feet before the end wall. So I had to then just redo it again because I you got the spacing add wrong. to the end. I... <laughs> Maybe a bird. <laughs> I potentially could have, um, but yeah, it's just freehanded, which is probably not the smartest way to do it, but it, it's, it totally worked and it was actually really fun. It looks, it looks great. Uh, but speaking of birds, do you, uh, do you have a bird handy, a bird in leather? I've never done a bird in leather before until just this week. This was, you did a live Instagram for this, right? It's, can that be seen? Sorry, it's, it's really hard with my lights. Yeah, it's kind of glossy. Uh, but this is a uh, foiled bird into... Uh, now, what is this bird? This is a, a flourish. Uh, it's part of Spencerian, isn't it? Yeah, it's an offhand flourished bird. It's actually one that was made by Darner, a penman uh, from the 1800s. Who This bird is in the off the Iampeth website. They have a scrapbook, and in the Iampeth scrapbook number two... There's, I don't remember exactly what page, but this bird is from there. Uh, could, I don't really do bird designs. I haven't trained it yet. Um, but I picked a bird and then did a, a live stream on Instagram just a couple of days ago to foil the bird while answering questions about foiling. Right. Because there's a, a lot of it was a Q and A and it was quite popular. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who want to do this foiling. I am not one of them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I it's really cool, but I, I don't want to do it. It's, I, it would take, well, now, how long have you been uh, actually uh, concentrating on Spencerian? Are we talking 20 years, 30 years, 40 years? I started dabbling in Spencerian probably probably around the same time that I met you, I would say. I don't around what year that was, though. What year? 2010. 2010. 2010, 2011, somewhere around oh, there. So maybe. about a decade of Spencerian is what you've got. Yeah. Okay. I do the want to play, was... I, oh, I want to play uh, the last video that I have, if I can find it. And I, before I play it, what in the world were you doing here? This is a, uh, looks like you're doing Spencerian with a black light and a glow-in-the-dark ink or something. What is this? That I'm about to show. Yeah, so it's Noodler's Blue Ghost, I believe is the name of the ink. Just their their black light ink. And then I have a black light that sit that hangs from my desk all the time. Right, so this is and, just uh you're writing your name, I, I believe is uh what you wrote, and it's just Noodler's Blue Ghost Spencerian style. Yeah. Here.
Okay, we're back. That is cool. That is cool. I don't know what you would use it for. <laughs> well, a friend had asked me um, a day or two prior to that. There's a few people that have done like really nice black light art pictures or videos on YouTube and stuff like that. And a friend had asked um, what camera settings you need to, to get good black light or how to get that much contrast. And I had no idea. So I had written with black light ink with this. I've had this bottle of ink for many, many years. And I used to write with it, but I haven't in a long time. So I got out the bottle and turned my camera on. And I this was sort of a test uh, that night. It seems to have worked. It's kind the, of cool. The, the practical, I guess, I do use the black light ink on uh, letters. Um, I don't always tell people if, it, if they have them or not. But if you've ever received a letter from me, or an, even like on the envelope, and you happen to have a black light, check it out. Because oftentimes out. there'll be... A little stick man like out. hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I'll just draw a little stick man hanging off letters or I'll just write random things. I'll be like, dear so and so. And then in black light, they'll say a little arrow and says, that's you or something silly like that. Uh, I do that from time to time. I would ask for a letter, but I don't have a black light. So I'd have to get one of those first. Oh, he's going to put me on your yeah. list, are you? Well, you don't have to go on the list. I'm going through. Last question for you. I have the last question for you. That says Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Now. <laughs> These are my Inko Rimo letters that I haven't mailed I yet. I thought you were going to mail those. I've been meaning to. Last question I'm for sorry, you. Was... We, we want to know about the ring on your finger. Did you make it? Is it leather? What's oh. the scoop? Yeah, it's uh, it's. Just a little slice of leather, the same leather I use for all the wrapping and stuff. and But this time it's just wrapped around yeah. my finger. Did you put it on your finger and then stitch it? Uh, no, this one was not <laughs> stitched in place. Uh, I had to make it because the leather obviously stretches. I've made a few leather rings. There's a couple on the shelf back here behind me. But I have to make them tight enough that they almost cut off my circulation. Uh, uh, otherwise, it stretches too much that it's... They just become right. too loose. So, but this one, this is the first one in, I mean, I've made a bunch of them over the years. It is, I wear it every day. I take it off when I shower, but I've washed my hands with it. It gets soap, it gets water, it gets lotion when I lotion my hands. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm quite happy with it. And it's, yeah, just stitched, just a piece of leather wrapped around my finger. Cool. Well, that's all I've got for you. Do you have any, is there anything I didn't ask that you'd like to cover? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, you know, we can always have you back on because we forgot. We forgot. We didn't talk about eighty percent of the stuff that you do. <laughs> well, there's there's too many things that I do. That's the problem. Right. We'll break it into part one, part two, part three, part. Four. This is only one thing I was going to show. Oh, okay. This is looks like a top hat. I mean, a bowler hat. And... It's, a polar hat. it's not finished yet, unfortunately. It's still in the oiling process, but it's an ink jar holder. Okay, so it that, will be that is a, a dip pen ink. ink jar. Yes. And it's going to have a hinge on it. And then it's magnet shut. Nice, nice sounding mag magnet you have there. Clear click. It'll be on my Instagram when it's finished. It's been a process. Uh, and uh, we'll put that in the description. But what is your Instagram? Is it MRMG Ward? At MRMG Ward. Yes, Mr. MG MG Ward. Okay, very good. Dr. Brown, how have you been doing over there? Michael and I <laughs> oh, have been wow, monopolizing the conversation. That was, a, that was a loud bang just a second ago. It was just a bedroom door snapping shut. Well, we know you have Sorry. somebody hidden in your apartment there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's all I've got. That's all yes. I got. I washed my hands of this. Indeed. We've been here for an hour and uh, we've had some fun and we've seen some things and we'll probably do this again next week. In fact, uh, I, I think we'll have Mark Bacchus on next week. Oh, how exciting. Oh, so he'll show us some pen stuff, some nib grinding stuff. Back and on. Yeah, yes. I've got some okay. Mark Bacchus work, work right over here on my right, so... We'll, we'll get him all situated and have him. So, okay, we'll just say it. Yeah, next week we'll be back. Same bat channel, same pen time. And uh, uh, we'll get Mark Bacchus on and he can tell us all about nibs. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Ward, for being here and sharing your creativity and uh, all your artistic endeavors. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Um, Dr. Brown, uh, you and I are in touch all the time, so I don't even have to say goodbye, but I will say Indeed. adios. <laughs> Bye. 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 I have clicked finish, but we are not yet off the air. I will tell you.